I'm Chris with Motion Worship, and I'm here to show you how to set up click tracks in Ableton for your worship set lists. So in the last tutorial, I showed you the most basic method of setting up click tracks in Ableton. In this one, we're going to dive into some more advanced techniques. Okay, so here's where we left off in the last tutorial. We have three different songs set up and different time signatures and tempos. We have our metronome turned on in the upper left hand corner. And if we press play on any of these songs, you should hear the click track. So now if you wanted to customize the sound of the click track, there's a few different ways to do it. If you're in live 10, they actually added this drop down next to the metronome icon. And if you click on that, you should see an option titled sound. And this has three different sounds in there. You can select any of these and play with them. They all sound pretty different, so just find the one that you and your team like the most and go ahead and use that. So those three options are cool, but pretty much all of the Ableton click track settings are very limited. So if you want more granular control over how you run your click tracks, here's what I do. Okay, so navigate over to drums under categories on the left hand side, find the drum rack, click and drag that onto our MIDI clip. And if you select your MIDI clip, you should see the drum rack at the bottom. Drum racks are usually used for dragging in drum samples to build out drum grooves, but we're going to use it for triggering click samples. So Ableton keeps their metronome samples buried in an application folder on your computer, and I'll put the location of those for Mac and PC on the screen right now. But you're going to want to go and find those and copy and paste them into a folder that's in a semi-permanent location on your computer. I actually already did this and I copied the samples over to a folder located on my desktop. So if you go to this add folder section and then select the folder you just created with the metronome samples in it and press open, it pulls it in over here on the left hand side. And when we click on that folder, you should see the metronome samples inside of there. Go ahead and select both of the metronome samples and click and drag them into the drum rack. And it doesn't matter where you put them. But if we go to one of the MIDI clips we created and double click on it, instead of the piano roll, you'll see both of the metronome samples there. We can simply double click in this area to draw those in. Here's the cool thing about building click tracks this way. This is so customizable. You can draw in 16th notes between these. You can drag any of these between the accented or non-accented click sample, depending on what you prefer. And then you can actually select any of these and turn down the sample velocity to control the volume of the sample. Something else to note is you want to make sure that this loop feature is turned on. You'll know it's on if the button is highlighted yellow. And if it's not on, it'll only play one time through. So just make sure that's on to keep the click track looping. And the other thing is, if we right click inside of this grid here, you'll see these fixed grid options. And you want to make sure that the option you have selected is at a minimum the lowest level of subdivision you're going to be using. So I always leave this on 16th notes, but if we were to go to 8th notes, and I delete these and try to draw them in, you'll notice that I can only draw in on the 8th note grid. I can't draw any click track samples in on the 16th note grid. So I just always leave this on 16th notes because I know I'm never going to create a click track faster than that. One more reason that building click tracks this way is so customizable is that you can actually edit the samples themselves inside of the drum rack. So if you wanted an accent on beat one, a regular metronome on beat four, and then you wanted the other click samples on the eighth notes in between to be quieter, instead of editing the sample velocity down here for each of those samples, we can just double click on our drum rack, drag in our original non-accented sample again, and we're gonna rename all these. This one will be regular, this one will be accent, and this one we just dragged in, we're gonna call quiet. So if you select that one and you turn down the volume over here, and we go back into the MIDI clip, you'll notice that that quiet sample is now an option. So we can leave our accent on beat one, the regular metronome on beat four, but we can drag these ones here onto that quiet sample row and draw on the rest of the eighth notes. Now we have the accent on one, the regular click on beat four, and then we have the quiet samples in between. The last thing you want to do is make sure that you turn the metronome icon off in the upper left hand corner because we're no longer using the default Ableton click. We're now triggering our own samples within the drum rack. So if we press play here, the new click track that we just created should be coming through. That's it for this tutorial. In the next video, I'll be showing you how I build guide tracks for songs in Ableton. 